let's be honest. Each of us has someone in our lives that just gets in our way. At just about every turn, when our lives could go one way or another, this individual is there to plant the seed of doubt, to put us on our heels, even if momentarily, or sometimes to dissuade us altogether. The way to get this person out of your life? Well, first, realize that you are that person in your life. Now, let's talk about how to change that. You know, we all battle with fears of some sort. I certainly do. I have for all my life. Some of those that that I can recall are during youth sports, for example, as a young guy when when the pressure was on me. <clears throat> I remember trying out for the JV basketball uh, team in high school, and I remember getting cut from that team and dealing with the fears of trying out again the next year. Fears associated with going off to college, with joining the military, with starting pilot training, with my first assignment, on my first combat mission. Fears in a new marriage, as a new parent. Fears in starting a business, starting this podcast, and even in how to approach today's topic and every topic that I, that I broach. There's always some level of fear. But guess what? That's normal. Fear is all around us, and it can be crippling, but it doesn't have to be. It can be empowering, and that's what I want to dig into today, because realizing this, addressing your fears and effectively using your emotions can propel you to new heights, and that's what we're here for, right? I mean, to be all that we can be, to bring all of our best selves to this life and to those around us. Over the past couple of weeks, we've talked about belief in ourselves, <clears throat> in being the type of person you want to be, and about your true why or your motivator. But we have to ask the question, what is it that often keeps us from being that person? Specifically, what fears do we have of, of rebalancing or reworking our priorities? What baggage do we bring from past attempts to live a more balanced and fulfilling life? What past experiences affect our self-efficacy or our belief that we can? And let's not forget, we also spend a lot of time worrying about what others think too. But no matter how we may think others view us, it's important that we believe in ourselves. We can't let negative self-talk or even negative real talk from others get us down. What I'm talking about here is your internal dialogue. Many of the things that work against us as we seek to grow are limiting beliefs, uh, negative self-talk, and either real or perceived negativity and doubt from others around us. And sometimes we let these things define our reality. But the truth is that we define our reality simply by how we think. If we think this is how I can instead of this is why I can't, then we define our reality. And when we define our reality, we can do things to shape that reality. Let me give you a few examples of negative self-talk and limiting beliefs in different areas of our lives. So for example, you may say, I have too much going on to try to balance all of this. It's just easier to stick to the way that I've been doing things, even as tough as it already is. You may say that these stressors in my life, they'll just never, they'll never go away. Or you may think, hey, you don't understand my situation and how hard it is. Or maybe you're telling yourself, I've failed at this before. What's going to be different this time? Hey, look, believe me when I tell you that, that I've done it too. I still do. Negative self-talk examples in my life have, have, have come up all the time. And they still do. I've thought to myself, who am I to create something? Who am I to start a business or run a business? Who am I to, to, to create a podcast? I've boxed myself into a corner by thinking in the past, you know, this is what people who run this type of business do, so I have to do that too. That's not true, by the way. <laughs> or maybe we tell ourselves, you know, these are the things that I can talk about on social media and in the content that I produce. I remember thinking 
at one point to, you know, this is what leaders in this role do. So maybe this is how I have to be. I'm going to come back to these. You know, as I thought about how our fears affect us in our daily lives, I've landed on really three broad categories of fear, those things that drive or amplify our internal fears. And these are the fear of failure, the fear of discomfort, and strangely enough, fear of success. So let me briefly address these these three fears. The first, and maybe the most obvious, is a fear of failing. I have certainly been afraid that I wouldn't succeed or that I wouldn't complete something that I set out to do because there is risk in trying. There is risk in the attempt. I mean, if if there was certainty, it wouldn't necessarily be an attempt. It would just be something that you do. But the fear of failing hits a nerve for so many of us, especially when we are less confident in our abilities or when we have doubts about our success. And there's a tendency to feel as though failure at this thing that I'm, I'm attempting would just be added to the long list of things that I didn't do or that I didn't accomplish before, thereby reinforcing what some of us think we know about ourselves, that we can't succeed. That's fear of failure. The next type of fear is a fear of discomfort. And this is the fear of trying or starting something new because it'll take us out of our comfort zone. We are creatures of comfort and intentionally seeking or embracing discomfort, it goes against our very nature. The reason why we have so many of of the unhealthy habits and, and fewer healthier habits in our society today is because comfort often trumps the sacrifices that are needed to grow and improve. It's certainly more comfortable for me to stay in my warm bed in the morning than it is to get up and exercise in the cold. It's more comforting for me to eat ice cream than it is for me to eat salad. And for many, it's even more comforting to remain busy than to take time to sit down, reflect, and spend time with loved ones. Change can be difficult. It takes us out of our comfort zone. You know, we ask ourselves, what exactly am I signing myself up for? I mean, I'm pretty comfortable right now. Why would I change that? Well, it's this fear of discomfort that creates that strong gravitational pull that works to keep us stagnant, to keep us where we are without moving forward. And the truth is, in just about everything in life, if you're not moving forward, you're actually moving backwards because the world is constantly changing around us. That's the fear of discomfort. And the final category of fear that I'll mention is fear of success. This sounds strange, I know, but sometimes we're afraid of the uncertainty and the commitment that comes with succeeding in our goal. What if I'm successful at exercising four time, four to five times a week? Will, will I have trouble keeping that up all year or forever? What if I do well with this, with adding more veg- vegetables to my diet? Will I have to worry about eating like that forever? What if I'm able to lose the weight? What's to say I won't gain it back again? How can I be sure? What if I make a commitment to, to being a better partner to my spouse, a better parent to my children, or stronger in my faith and my beliefs? Am I ready to sign up for that? This subconscious fear of success holds many of us back because we're afraid of commitment. That's fear of success. So whether it's fear of failure, fear of discomfort, or fear of success, it's all fear, right? But here's the thing. In order to change, to improve, or to grow, we have to embrace those fears, each and every one of them. If you let fear of failure grip you, then you will never try. And if you don't try, you certainly won't succeed. You'll miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. And when it comes to fear of success, try to embrace the long-term commitment that comes with being successful by taking it just one day at a time. If your goal is to live a better life, I mean, that's a long-term goal. The point is to change for the better, for good. (laughs) Yes, it may mean that you have more of a responsibility to yourself and to those you love, but I mean, isn't that what we want? And by the way, over time, it actually gets easier to maintain. Regarding our fear of discomfort, you know, James Clear, the author of Atomic Habits, said it best. He said, 
Many people delay taking action because they hope to avoid suffering. They keep searching for a path that won't involve trade-offs. But some form of suffering is always inevitable. The process of taking action is the process of choosing your pain. And while I I don't know that I'd necessarily call it suffering or pain all the time, I certainly agree, though, that discomfort is part of the deal. And that's the very reason why change is hard. The classic example of choosing your pain that James Clear mentions is, you know, regular exercise now or dealing with health issues later. Do you want to invest in your marriage or relationship now or do you want to invest in a counselor later? Do you want to sacrifice to be a more engaged parent now, or do you want to try to mend relationships with your children later? So whether it's fear of failing, fear of success, or fear of discomfort that's holding you back, turn and face those fears and claim the change, the victory that you deserve. All right. Are we tired of talking about fear yet? <laughs> How about we, we talk about strength? Because I'm encouraging you to, to get out of your own way. Yes, fears are a part of life, but decisions are also a part of life. Viktor Frankl has said, between stimulus and response, there's a space. And in that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. What this means is that you get a vote. Even when your subconscious self, that self that lets those fears bubble up, even when that tries to stand in the way of your progress, your balance, your growth, and your thriving. You know, going back to some of the things that I mentioned that I've, I've had fears about or questions about, you know, who am I to create something? Who am I to start a business or to create a podcast? Well, I've seen plenty of other folks do it. I saw my father create and run his own business. So who am I not to? Another one, this is what people who run this type of business do. So I have to do that too. Well, I've learned that I don't have to fit the mold of what society expects. I am my own person. I'm unique and you are too. And the world wants your uniqueness. Oscar Wilde said, be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. You know, I initially told myself that I had to limit the boundaries of what I could talk about, you know, through this forum through the content that I produce. But just because TD Fitness started as a personal training service doesn't mean that I have to be pigeonholed into only talking about fitness advice. I've learned and I've grown over the years and TD Fitness has too. So I feel comfortable expanding to talk about other areas of health and growth in so many facets of our lives to include the importance of faith in my life. And then finally, you know, I used to tell myself that this is what leaders in this role do, but I don't have to be the leaders that I saw. I can take the good that I learned from them and add that to my toolbox and discard the the bad things, right? I seek to be who I am in every opportunity, leadership or otherwise. I don't try to necessarily fit a mold per se. Because we're called to fill these roles because of who we are. So trying to be someone that I'm not would be disingenuous to who I am. And it would also rob those that I serve of the freedom to be their selves as well. So how can we start to develop this mindset of overcoming our fears? How can you look to the future with hope and belief that you can, despite those voices that are in your head. Well, first, listen. Listen for and squash that negative self-talk and those limiting beliefs as soon as they pop into your head. Squash that voice in your head that's telling you that you can't do this. Sometimes we don't even give ourselves a fighting chance at success before those thoughts about why we can't succeed take over. But that initial belief in our ability to do something, to change something, that very first thought and those thoughts that immediately follow have a huge impact on the outcome. But the unfortunate reality is that this is where many of us fail before we even start. We kill our goals and our visions for a better self 
our dreams before the thought even has time to develop or materialize. But again, our reality is shaped by what we believe. So be deliberate about getting out of your way. (laughs) Make the leap, as I like to say. You know, courage isn't the absence of fear. It's moving forward despite our fears. I've used an example before from the TV game show Jeopardy. If you want to be successful at that game, you have to ring in before the complete answer actually comes to you and trust that you'll just know the answer. Because if you wait, it's too late. Someone else has already buzzed in. So go ahead. Make that leap. Raise your hand in class before you've fully developed your response. When I started this podcast a few years ago, I didn't come up with 123 ideas for episodes. I mean, I made the leap, kind of hoping that ideas would just come to me (laughs) from one week to the next. And now, in episode 123, we're talking about something that we all struggle with. When I set out to complete a 140-mile Ironman triathlon, Having never run a full marathon in my life, I might add, um, which is the third leg of that of the Ironman triathlon, you know, I wasn't sure that I'd finished. I was scared that I would quit during the race. I feared what others would think of me, but I made the leap and I finished. But we can't finish unless we start something. So you have to you have to make the leap. Take that first step. When our daughter was born, you know, I wasn't sure that I'd be a good father. But now I embrace being a hashtag girl dad, even though I know I don't always get it right. But I leapt. I made that leap. The impossible is possible once we look past our fears. Sometimes we just need to pull ourselves along. And we do that by making the leap. And I'll be honest with you, you know, many of you know this. One of the things that I fall back on in my life is my faith when I'm staring fear in the face. There's a saying that says, God will not protect you from what he can perfect you through. And when I think about that, apprehensions turn into opportunities. Fear turns into a path that was meant to be. And I can better embrace it while knowing that he's in control. You know, my faith not only comforts me and relieves some of my fears, I'm also better prepared and equipped to handle things through faith. In Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 11, he writes to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the strategies of the devil. And I've felt this armor, if you will, time and time again, as it has allowed me to step confidently into numerous uncomfortable and sometimes dangerous situations. And I made it through those things, often thriving because of God. Paul also wrote, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, that God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidness, but one of power, of love, and of self-discipline. This means that God is not about fear. He's about empowering you to live fulfilled, to bring all of yourself into this world and to thrive. And then finally, in his, in his letter to the Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, the Apostle Paul writes, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. I still have fears. Every day there's something that gives me pause, that causes uncertainty, that makes me apprehensive or downright scared. But what's also in my life every day, multiple times a day, is prayer. The devil's greatest weapon is fear, but when I trust in God, none of that matters. You know, the author Napoleon Hill wrote and encouraged us to, quote, transform our thoughts from fear to faith. It may not be the easiest thing to do, but it is absolutely possible and it has served me well. So my parting message to you, your action item, if you will, is to make the leap despite your fears. Don't wait. Start before you think you're ready. This is what we do as leaders. This is what we must do as servants. This is what we must do to live a life in which we bring our full selves to the service of others. Thanks for listening. Coach T, out.